is back. The second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs begin tonight in Boston with 76ers and Celtics. The Celtics, no strangers to adversity, facing another possible roadblock tonight. They may be without Jalen Brown. He is listed as doubtful for game one due to a strained right hamstring. Coach Brad Stevens saying the test came back negative but is unsure of when Brown will return. The Celtics are already dealing with the loss of Kyrie Irving for the duration of the playoffs. A reminder, we are down to eight teams in the NBA playoffs. Here is a look at the games coming up on ESPN and ABC, beginning with LeBron and the Cavs facing Toronto on Thursday, followed by an ESPN doubleheader on Friday and games on ESPN and ABC on Saturday and Sunday. That'll do it for this update. Let's get you back to first take. Tony, thanks. Already no Gordon Hayward or Kyrie Irving. And now the Celtics will enter the semifinals without Jalen Brown. Max, what's the key to this series? Well, you just said it like they're down three of their top five players when you count Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. But now Jalen Brown, they got their work cut out. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll leave some of the other matchup stuff to Stephen A. But let me just say, Al Horford has to play out of his mind for Boston. I mean, I assume we're talking about what does Boston have to do against Philadelphia because they are outmanned right now. Yeah. Philadelphia has two special players in Embiid and Simmons. You know, when I say four-star, five-star, and Oladipo and DeRozan and these guys are four-star players, Simmons and Embiid, even if you want to say, well, they're not five-star yet, but they almost, Simmons almost kind of is already. They're just ridiculously good, and then they got shooters everywhere. So Al Horford is kind of the last guy literally standing. I mean, he and Tatum. For, for Boston, Stephen A., his matchup with Embiid is going to be critical. Horford has to play out of his mind. And Horford is, you don't want to call him like a statless all-star, like that, that article about Shane Battier years ago, the statless all-star, right? But Horford is like a version of that. He doesn't need to put up eye-popping numbers with, to know that if you watch the game, he had an enormous impact on both sides of the floor. One thing about Horford, though, in the past is, in playoff games sometimes, particularly when they needed scoring for him, from him, he hasn't delivered. Um, he's almost like too perfect a player in certain respects, too disciplined, and sometimes just doesn't, you know, do his thing offensively, which he's capable of doing. He is going to have to play unbelievable defense and also get his offensively for the Celtics to have a chance. He is an excellent player, Horford, sort of the prototypical modern big, the, the guy you're looking for. Embiid is that, you know, inflated. Mm -hmm. But Horford has to be the very best version of himself for the, for the Celtics to even have okay. a chance in this series. Let me say this to you. Number one, if Kyrie Irving were healthy, I would pick Boston to win this series. Uh, it's just that simple to me. And you're worried more about Al Horford than I am. I'm worried more about Joel Embiid because he hasn't performed well against the, uh, against the Boston Celtics this year. That's a problem. Keep in mind this big, big thing. As big time as Joel Embiid is as a talent, Al Horford runs the floor. And he shoots perimeter shots just as good, if not better, than Joel Embiid. Horford can bring the ball up. Well, listen to this. But forget all of that for a second. The reason why it's important is because Al Horford brings Joel Embiid away from the basket. And if Joel Embiid is away from the basket, all of a sudden you're Boston and you can attack the hole. Unlike if you were going up against one of, you know, Hassan Whiteside, for example, you get to languish in the paint. Joel Embiid can't do that in this series. So that makes things interesting. Then you got to also worry about Brad Stevens, who's an exceptional coach, forcing Ben Simmons to become a scorer. And if he does that, then we've got a problem. I don't believe that's going to happen in this series because of the absence of Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. Terry Rozier is special. This kid is not some just, just some backup. He is on the scene. He has arrived. He has put the basketball world on notice that Brad Stevens or somebody needs to find some playing time for me because this brother can ball. Terry Rozier is a special player, no doubt about it. But the absence of, of Gordon Haywood and Kyrie Irving, along with Jalen Brown being hobbled, and not available for game one. That puts even more the onus on Horford. It puts even more the on, on, onus on, on Rogier and obviously Jason Tatum. I think the way the Sixers have been playing with their perimeter shooter, I'm assuming Covington, Redick, Sarek, and those boys can, are going to continue to shoot the ball. Here's the other thing that makes this interesting, where I see this as potentially a seven-game series, okay? Um, I think in order for the Sixers to win this series, it would be best for them to take them in six. Because you go back to game seven in Boston, that's problematic. And chances are Jalen Brown is going to be there for that. I just look at it from this perspective. Redick is your best shooter. He's on the floor. 
The problem with him is that he's undersized. So as a result, by having him on the floor, he has to defend somebody. And because he has to defend somebody, okay, that's obviously a matchup you can exploit if you're Boston. If you're Rozier or somebody like that, you can go right at J.J. Reddick. Not saying he can't play defense, but he's undersized. And I look at it from that perspective where Sarek, Covington, uh, uh, Ilasova and these boys, they not only can shoot, they've got good size on them. But Ben Simmons is going to be the key. He has to continue to play his game. He can't allow Brad Stevens to force him to be a scorer in order to win. Because if that happens, Boston will win this series. I'm picking the Sixers, but it's a tight one, pick them kind of series. I'm going to say they got a better shot at winning this in six than in seven. And that's where I'm going to go with it for now. I thought the Celtics were going to be tough. I don't see it as a seven-game series. Maybe not even as a six-game mm -hmm. series. What we, saw, what we saw in the first round with the Celtics was the best coach outplaying, outcoaching the best player, right? Brad Stevens' coaching uh, advantage outweighed the Greek freak's playing advantage. That's really what it was about. The problem is the Sixers have two Greek freaks, and now Boston is down Jalen Brown. I mean, they were already hobbled, but now they're down on yet another player for at least the game. And Brad Stevens is going to have to find to beat two Greek freaks. And unlike Milwaukee, these two freaks have shooters everywhere you look. So Boston also, and not also, really, if you said, if you just had to say one thing, what does Boston have to do to beat Philadelphia? You got to do something about Philly shooters. The problem is it's too much to take care of because you got to do something about the big guy and Ben Simmons. And by the way, I think the Sixers, even with Embiid defending Horford, even if Horford sucks him out a little bit and Simmons has turned into more of a scorer than you'd like him to be, I still think the Sixers got too much for the Celtics. Well, listen, too much talent. I just think that you're so in love with Ben Simmons, and I don't blame you because he is LeBron James part two mm -hmm. once he gets a jump shot. Keep in mind. It's a huge problem for the Sixers if Ben Simmons turns into a scorer because you're going to send him to the free throw line. This is a guy that did not shoot well from the free throw line during the regular season. You can't ignore that reality. And against Boston, they're going to hit their free throws. They come with it. They got high basketball IQ. I'm not underestimating Boston at all. There's no way in hell I think they win just one game in the series. I think this is easily, almost automatically a six-game series, likely a seven-game series. I see it five or six. Well, if you say seven, then you may take the Celtics in an upset because that would be a Boston no, no. guard. I got to wait and see. I'll be there. I got to wait and see, but I'll be there. I'm picking the Sixers to win this series. In seven. In six. In six. In okay. six. Imagine Get to a seventh both game. These Get to a seventh game. Loaded, though. Well, that, the, the thing about if it was this, fully loaded, if oh. both of these teams were fully loaded, Boston would beat Philly in five or six the, games. The thing about this this matchup, though, this is going to be really the finals for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Meaning, the, the balance of power is likely about to shift from west to east. And about what time. you're seeing, Sixers, Celtics. When you think about the starting five of the Celtics next mm -hmm. year, if they're healthy, and that's if they don't make any major moves, and then you think about the Sixers, who is going to get with one of those two teams? I will say this. I'll give Ben Simmons credit for this. I brought up his free throw shooting. It has improved in the postseason. Mm -hmm. He's up to 71% in the postseason yeah. in the five games. So I, I won't ignore that. Right. But he's got to hit free throws. He's so fun he's to got watch. To, he's got to hit free throws. Man, it's so fast. This will be the 20th postseason series between the Celtics and 76ers, the most series meetings between two teams in NBA history. Game one tonight at 8. Let's talk some football, gentlemen. Josh Allen may have been drafted by Buffalo, but find out why he'll have to explain his past transgressions before he becomes a part of that Bills family. And he's the best player in the world and a three-time champion, but is King James underrated? Keep voting in our Facebook poll question, and you won't want to miss how Stephen A. feels about it. Number two, again, I did address the offensive line. You just didn't listen, Keith Sweat. You didn't listen. I said the offensive line is suspect. Excuse I me. You guy. don't get to say that, rookie. You sit back and listen, <laughs> chi -tab. He was fun. He sure was. Make yourself heard on First Take Your Take. Head over to Facebook. Check out our debate. It's on Facebook Watch. Then post your video reaction for a chance to debate with Stephen A. or Max, just like that guy did. This spring, no matter where you live, the Home Depot...